Today we're going to talk about telescopic rods. Now, the first rod I ever used was a cane pole. You see, I'm an old timer. I'm a half, I'm half, exactly half of 110 years old. So when I was six years old, my daddy put me on a bed of bluegill and I used the cane pole. When I got a couple, two or three years older, probably about nine, ten years old, he bought me a telescopic rod. Now, uh, this is not the one he bought. This was sent by a subscriber, but this, years ago, and I'm, I've used it for several videos, this is about a 35-year-old rod. It's a Johnny Walker fiberglass telescopic rod. This is what we had back in the day right here. Uh, this particular one, I believe, is 10 foot long. Now, rigging a telescopic rod, well, watch this right here. Watch this right here. And there it is. There's one, two, two joints in this particular rod right here. Now, on the end of it, there's a line tie right there and generally speaking I use a trialing knot on the end um, when I'm fishing for crappie and I use most of the time anywhere from six to eight pound test line because you don't have a drag you need a little heavier line than four pound test because you might you might hook a bass now as far as the length of the line I really don't like it to exceed whatever length of pole I'm using. If I'm using a 10 foot pole, I don't want my line to be no longer than 10 foot. Um, and a lot of times shorter, it just depends how deep the water is that you're fishing and how deep the fish are that's in front of you. But usually I would say anywhere from rod length to a couple feet short of that. That's my preference. Now, as far as the crappie jig goes, let me put my cutters up right here I just use there's several different ways to tie a loop knot matter of fact I know of four ways but this is the most simplest quickest and to me is probably the strongest loop knot of all as far as I but just run it through the eyelet like that leave yourself about four or five inches of line okay you got a double line right there just Coil that around your fingers and drop that jig through there three times. Twice the knot will slip, three times it won't. Take that eyelet, grab those two lines and simultaneously pull them to the eyelet and then pull those double lines off the eyelet. Pull the knot towards the eyelet and what you have right here let me cut the tag in off, and I always leave about a sixteenth of an inch because this knot won't slip, won't slip at all. But what you have right here is about an eighth of an inch in between the knot and the eyelet, and that's about what I like. Tying a loop knot that way, you can get it as close as you want to and quick. But anyway, that's uh, generally what I do for crappie. Not only is it a great technique, you can you can actually finesse a bite out better by having a single pole like that. And it's a lot of fun. Hey. What we have right here, folks, is a bank. Now this bank right here, it's a rip route bank, is holding quite a few crappie these are late spawning crappie the, these are the last of the crappie that's going to be spawning we're going to start right here right here is where the rip wrap gets a little bit deeper now if y'all can see there's a lot of rocks down through here right at the base of those rocks those crappie are spawning and they've been hitting about three feet deep, two and a half to three feet deep. You be careful, them old rocks is slidey. <laughs> I don't want to do it again. Um, uh, yeah, I know. 
There's one. My goodness. He's fighting on this limber pole, folks. That reminds me so much of a, a cane pole, but a telescopic pole, you can do that right there and shorten your rod up as long as you don't have too long of a line and just lift him up to you. But this fish right here is way too small. We're going to let him go. That's probably about an eight inch crappie. Maybe a little bit longer, but let's let him go right here. Man, he shot out like a bullet. And just extended on out there. Back to where it was. That's the way I do it. Right there. And I tell you, really it's a perfect setup when fish are real close to the bank like this. You have a lot of control. And I use, I grab my rod up here like this, about two feet from the from the butt of the rod and use my forearm like that. And that way it's not so heavy. I could fish with this all day long. Like that. Look at there. It's all about how you move it, ain't it, Mama Sue? A little too fast and they just don't want to bite. Let's see what you got right there. Now we just want a few to eat. That's about a nine and a half, ten inch crappie. We're going to keep him, folks. We're out to have some supper this evening, ain't we, Mama? Yeah. So we'll put these two on ice. Put these drinks in there so a little bit of slime can get on there. This is an inch point five oh blue, one twenty eighth of an ounce jig head with a size 8 hook. I'm going to go ahead and bend that mm, hook point up just a little bit. These little light jigs like this, and if you're fishing right in the middle of the day, what they'll do, they'll keep you catching fish light and small. Ooh, I just missed one right there. That was probably a bluegill. But those smaller jigs like that is a is a plus for right in the middle of the day because these fish ain't active. If they were, I would be catching a, a lot of them. There's a lot of fish in here. There's one. Yep. Little black crappie. I tell you what, folks. I love this little pole right here with that fluorocarbon line on there. It, this is fiberglass, so that really that fluorocarbon line gives, gives me a little bit of feel. That fish was barely, barely hooked. Yeah, that fish is about nine and a half inches. I'm gonna keep him. A long pole like that, like this, I'll just start right over here by the bank. Now this is when I'm trying to figure out where they're at, folks. And I let it, that jig's about four feet deep right now. And all I do is go all the way around real slow. See that little jig, light jig is just following in behind that rod tip. Then I'll put a little action in it, let it fall back. Little bitty twitches. But I'll do that 180 degrees. There we go. That's a good fish right here. That ain't a bad crappie at all. God, I wish Lisa could get out here with me. That's a male black crappie. Look how black that fish is. Get a rod right here where we can shorten it up. That's what I like about these telescopic rods. They make them like just like this, these, this day and time. In fact, 
the truth is they're more sensitive and a lot lighter than back up in the day i mean this rod is like 30 years old folks it's fiberglass but there's a good keeping fish right there she's there at the dock uh bucket's way over here well we're going to have supper tonight. I'm pretty well convinced of that. Going to be crappie. There we go. So, Bob, are you catching any? Are you catching any? <laughs> Did you do that? No, I didn't. A limb fell from this pine tree. I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> A pan fish <laughs> You don't like catfish. <laughs> There's one. Yeah, this is a good fish, folks. This is a doggone big, big crappie. Come on, hold size eight. Oh my goodness, this is a giant. Giant crappie. I didn't expect that, not this late in the spawn. But you never know when it comes to fishing. I hope he don't jerk that little hook. Golly, what a crappie. Look here, what a fish. My, 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 my. That's a good one. Yeah. That fish is just about quit spawning. You can see his, he's about done. That's a male. He's done his job. He's fertilizing them eggs, but he's fixing to get filleted. That, that's a good, good size right there to fillet. Let's go put him in the bucket for Mama Sue. That's a good crappie. Oh my goodness, a black crappie. Black crappie. I'm gonna put him in a bucket because they're not biting too good. We're gonna have supper. Whoa. Now fiberglass ain't is not near as sensitive as graphite. So that's one reason why I selected to use this fluorocarbon line because there's not much stretch at all in it, so it makes it a little bit more sensitive. I could have used six pound test. Oh, Got a bite right there. Six pound test high vis line. That would have been a good choice. But I don't have any six pound test high vis line. I need to get some. There's one. Woo. I moved way up the rip route. I'm gonna tell Lisa about this. I caught that one really quick. They could be several right here. Hey, honey. Baby Lisa. That's a keeper too. He thumped that jig. Golly, I wish I'd brought my bucket with me. I'm gonna bring it back, folks. It's way up the underway where the truck is. Let's take this into the truck. Folks, I'd like to introduce you to Carl Fulcher. Now, I'm gonna tell you, he's a remarkable crappie fisherman. I first met him in Walmart, and uh, he'd been watching our channel and all that. And we fished in uh, several times in a couple different sloughs through the years. I've known Carl for, I'm gonna say going on probably two years, two years. He served in Vietnam the, exact, the same exact years that my two brothers did. And um, he's quite a fella, catches a lot of fish, and we appreciate his service, no doubt. Carl, you got anything to add to that? Not really. Uh, well, I appreciate you and what you did for us over there. That was, uh, that was, uh, you're a hero in my book. 
I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. And... And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good food!